I forget here. Okay, we are recording. Um, and you guys forgive me, I'm in the car because our power is out in the house and I have, I'd be sitting like by a flashlight, like a, you know, spooky campfire story. <laughs> so I'm out here in the car trying to get as much light as I possibly can to do this training with you guys because we have, I dare say my very favorite person and trainer here in Plexus. This girl is like wise beyond her years. Um, we don't really have a whole lot of people back year after year, but Amber, we do because we love her. And um, she was Plexus's youngest diamond back a couple years ago at the age of 25. She was a diamond. She was at the top of this company. If you didn't catch our, our conversation earlier, she lives in um, kind of the backwoods of Tennessee. She is a homeschool mama, and I am going to pass it on over to Amber. Amber, thank you so, so much for being here and taking your evening out. Thank you so much for having me. And that was so sweet. Such a sweet introduction. I love coming back here and so many people on. And I'm very, very excited to share with you guys tonight. So going back to the beginning of my story, because it's really the base for everything I really talk on and I'm so passionate about now because of having gone through it. And I always tell people like what I did is everything not to do, but in your biggest um, biggest struggles comes your greatest area of, of sharing, right? That's what I always tell people when they say, oh, I'm really bad at this. I'm like, great, go learn it and you'll be the best teacher because you have to learn. So that was really my story. Plexus, uh, this business did not come natural to me in any way. I started when I was 23. Um, I've, got, I've been homeschooled my entire life. I had always had little entrepreneurial businesses, but they were more like selling chicken eggs and baking bread and doing things like that. So nothing in this form. And when um, Plexus came to me from my friend who was a bridesmaid in my wedding, she knew I had really, really bad allergy issues, seasonal allergy issues and gut problems. And I was working with master nutritionists and all the things to try to help that. And she also knew that I was always trying to earn extra income from ways that I thought I could. My, I love, 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 love network marketing because of the opportunity and the level playing field for anyone, right? I didn't have any certain set of skills. I didn't know any certain set of things, but this opportunity was wide open. So I was at the time selling chicken eggs. I had a hundred chickens. So we did, I did that pretty frequently. I was baking bread at a bakery, waking up with my little son that you saw and taking him at 3 a.m. in the morning to go bake bread. I was cleaning for people um, like Airbnb type things. And then also cooking and delivering food to a few neighbors and doing that. All of these things just to earn a little bit of side income. So when Plexus came to me, um, the products are amazing. I saw results really quickly, but what inspired me to do the business, and I love sharing this part, was going to an event. I, events are so, so, so powerful because my friend could have shared with me and she did all the time, but I really didn't catch that vision until I went to an event, which could be a Zoom, right? At right now, a virtual event. And I heard people's stories. The stories that these women told really made me think, maybe I could do this. So I signed up as an ambassador and I wanted to go silver because I wanted that hundred bucks. I wanted that hundred bucks so bad. And I went to three people, my mom, I like got her credit card and made her order my mother-in-law and a cousin and they all ordered. They were loving their products. Now, almost eight years later, they're all still using and on their products. And I started to grow, share with a few more. I did, went through all the awkward periods of like calling friends on the phone and um, copy paste messages, all of these skills that I was didn't have at the time. One of my funniest stories, you guys, because I was talking about bad internet, right? We had really, really bad internet. I would drive um, to the library to use the Wi-Fi so my little one would fall asleep. I had one son at the time fall asleep in the car. He would have his nap and I would work on my phone. Um, but one of my funniest stories is I was so, so scared to be authentic and to be real. I was so focused on myself and what the other person would be thinking about me. One of the things I'm telling my team a lot for this year, our mission is to get out of the way, 
to get out of the way of somebody else's results, somebody else's future in the business um, and not interject our own fears and insecurities, right? But at the time I was so worried about every single message and really thinking that the key was the perfect words, which it's not. The key is how well you serve them and your energy that you show them. Um, but I sent this copy paste message to a man asking him how, how his nursing session was going and how, how that experience was for his firstborn. And you guys, I hit it accidentally before I could edit the top. And I ran and I pulled out my router as fast as I could. And I would not let my husband plug that back in for like three days because I wasn't sure. Um, it was a learning curve. I never copy and pasted after that moment. I still use the notes in my phone. But um, that was one of my stories back then. But so I was going, I had gotten to gold and I had gotten to gold very, very rough. It wasn't smooth, but very rough, but it had happened. And at that time, my mom, you guys saw her on the Zoom. She's also a diamond. She had soared in the business. She's my, she signed up under me, so grateful, but she had soared. She was emerald or almost diamond at the time. I mean, she flew, flew. She hit diamond in 11 months. She flew up the ranks because she did not have any of the personal insecurities that I had, right? She had full belief in the products and she wasn't getting in the way of them because she was excited to share. So that's why she was able to do that. She also had influence um, because she had added a lot of value to people's lives over the time. And I always tell my people, influence is something that you learn to have and you can have. So even at 23, just because I didn't have influence, it's still a level playing field for me because I can create that. Influence is something that you create. It's not something some people have and some people don't. So don't, don't ever feel discouraged if you see someone else and you think, oh my gosh, they have thousands of followers or everybody listens to them because they have this degree. Influence is something you create. So that's in your hands. But um, so she was flying through the ranks and I had somebody quit the products actually had three people quit the products. Okay. And I went to my mom and I said, I am a failure. I can't do this. I'll just, anyone that comes to the products, I'll send them to you because all of your people order and join and stay and all of my people don't. So I'll take the products forever, but I'm not doing this. And she said, she was like, oh, she, she told me she wanted me to read this book before I kept going. Um, before I said I would quit, it was called, um, and guys, remember I was gold. I was making good money. I was actually, because my mom was flying through the ranks, I was making almost $3,000 a month at this time. Okay. Because I had a lot, large amount of points just from my mom's leg. And I was still like, I'm done. And so I always like to tell people that because sometimes we seek validation in income amount, right? Like, well, if I made more, then I'd be consistent. Or if I made more, then maybe that'd be a sign that I could be good. The dollar amount doesn't have anything to do with your own mindset around it because that's all that that bar that you set is always going to change right so um so I said I'm done she brought me this book it was called failing forward by Don Maxwell and I always tell people that I read this book but I truly because this is how I read books I read the first chapter I read the first chapter and it was convicting enough uh that it, it, the whole the whole basis of it was that you have to quote unquote fail to move forward that fail fail and I really hate that word I call it attempts I tell my children attempts a great attempt oh well you attempted it because I want that wiped out of the out of our category but failures are just attempts it's just a movement and every time you attempt you learn something or you change yourself because we are not the same person. Every message you send, every follow-up you do, every post you do, every training you're on, every time you share Plexus, every time you give a sample, you are not the same person afterwards because you have gained this experience even though you might think it's, it's tiny, it doesn't really add up, it compounds, right? It adds up. Um, I have one girl on my team who likes to say, I feel like I'm always two step forwards, one step back. And I told her, no, like, I, you're not allowed to say that anymore because there's no going back from where you've been. I don't care if your points drop a little bit. I don't care if, if a prospect drops off from your funnel. You cannot go back to who you were yesterday or last month. So if you are on here and you're like, I have been going forward and maybe I'm not where I want to be, or maybe I was where and I've fallen back, 
There is no back with you. Your points, your rank, your position, your income, they are always flexible measures, but that is not you. There's no going back with you. So I really want you to take, take um, hold of that for the future. So I was like, okay, I guess I will keep moving forward. And my mom said, if you tell me you can't do this one more time, I'm going to wash your mouth out with soap. That was my mom's term. So she right there started training me with the mindset of getting things out of my language. So if you guys find yourself saying something a lot, like I can't do this and for everybody, it's going to be different. It, and, and for every position, it's going to be different, right? Because maybe for you, you feel like I can't, um, I can't post well, or I can't do stories, or I can't make friends on social media, or I can't. And for somebody else, it's going to be, it's going to be something else. And once you conquer that thing, once you get really good at stories, there's going to be a new thing that you're going to have to learn, right? And if, and unless you can learn to get rid of the, I can't and say, I will learn. I can't do it yet. Yet is a beautiful word. I love the word yet. Yet leaves open for possibilities and puts the puts it in your hands, right? So I can't do, I can't do social media or I can't do social media yet, but I'm learning, right? Like it's completely different. So learn to love the word yet and tell your team, if they say it can't, make them put a yet on it. Um, so, so I, so I started to share and grow more. I attempted and I attempted and I attempted. And honestly, it is all so, so, so blurry. <laughs> um, all, all have been in Plexus eight years this coming spring. I have a terrible memory anyways, but it is so blurry during that time. I know there were a lot of people are like, how did you work the business? There was so much nooks and crannies works. I didn't have some amazing schedule. I like to tell people um, because some people see it as a, like now I have a lot of help in my life. I have a house cleaner, which I love. I haven't done laundry in two years. I have an amazing nanny. You guys, those are, and by nanny, it's a 16 year old that comes over a few days a week for a couple hours and plays with the kids um, that I helped babysit when she was little. Those are all blessings that I wanted, right? That I was working towards. I did not have those going to Diamond. So I wanna tell you guys, like I had no help. I think if you can get help, get it fast. It'll add so much blessing to your family, whether you are silver or ruby, whatever, get help. <laughs> but um, don't use that as a reason. If you see a Diamond living a different lifestyle than you, you know that they didn't, that lifestyle for most of us, for me at least, that's something that I did not have when building this business. So it is all blurry, but it was a lot, a lot of attempts. And what I learned in the process was that skills are never the problem. And I really want to give that to you guys because I think it's so freeing skills. So being able to present, being able to do a Zoom, being able, y'all, the first Zoom, I just told this story the other day. The first, because because our business right now, I feel like we're in a transitional period. We're having to learn how to do it differently. 2020 was like, whoop, we are having to learn different skills right now. We're having to learn how to create culture um, virtually where maybe we didn't have to before. We're having to learn how to maybe stand out a little bit more, how to, how to be one-on-one -on -one with our people where we didn't before. But if you haven't been here for eight years, you probably haven't seen that yet, but this business does that. I'm sure Autumn, you've seen like, I'll be like, oh, do you see the new thing in Plexus? It's the new thing. Everyone's doing this thing. Like we didn't have to do that before. Instagram is new. We didn't do Instagram before. Instagram is something I've only been doing for like three years. And I said for a solid year, I cannot do social media. Put me in front of a person and I'll make them my best friend and we'll be great and they'll order products. I cannot do social media. And, I, and this was at Diamond, I said this. And my mom was the one who told me, well, if you keep saying you can't, then yeah, of course you can. And it just kind of shook me. So I went and made a graphic for myself and I had virtual, I had people behind computer screens, little, um, little stick men running towards me. And the graphic had me standing in the middle and they had little bubbles saying, I want Plexus. I love being your friend. Oh, you know, like, and I had that as the cover photo of my phone because I knew I had to change my mentality. I had to be open to the possibility and not see it as something that is not for me, but see it as something that could be for me, 
right? As an, an option and opportunity. So, um, and, and I share that story to tell you guys, it is never done. There is always something that you will hit, whether right now in your business, it's you're brand new and it's just trying to learn how to share, or maybe you are gold, senior gold, and you're just trying to retain and like grow from that. That is a hard place to be gold, senior gold. It is a transitional place to be not hard, transitional. And every time we have those transitional ranks, um, like around senior Ruby, and you're really trying to empower more leaders underneath you, there's going to be new skills to learn. But if we can um, have the mindset of skills are easy because there's formulas out there, there's courses out there, people can learn these things. What is difficult is the emotional side of giving yourself time, patience, grace, and belief through the process, right? So maybe maybe you're in a part in your space in your business where you're really having to step in and, it, and it's, it's uncomfortable, it's difficult, you're in this transitional part, you're in this where you've got to learn something new and you have to step in. And in the stepping in, skills are not your problem. You will gain skills as you go. You do not need to worry about it. We tend to point to one thing and say, because I'm not good at this or because I'm not like her in this or because I don't know how to do this, then that's my, that's, well, this is where I'm at. If we, if we can shift it to that, this, this, follow up, being a leader, what, all those things, those are skills you gain in the process and give ourselves that, that patience of time to learn. Just like we would, if you went to go sign up to be a nurse, you have to go through nursing school. That's years, right? Years and years and years. There's tests, there's books, there's clinicals, there's um, having to go do it in person. There's all these kinds of things. You would not decide to be a nurse and then be upset that you were not one a couple months later or that you didn't have the experience of the head nurse or, right? Because you, you, we, we know that there's a process and if we go through the process, we'll be able to take the test and get the certificate. It is no different in Plexus. The only thing that um, is the, the factor that you have to grab hold of more is belief in yourself through the process. Like I am going to be here. So I tell my team, I don't, I, I wish we could stop focusing on rank as a measure of success and have it be reliability. Are you reliable Are, to your business? Are you going to be there tomorrow and next month? Because you guys have seen people hit top ranks and then they disappear, right? Or people hit something that you might think is your measure of success. If I could hit Ruby, then I would know that I was good at this. And people hit Ruby and people hit senior Ruby and they disappear. It's not the rank that makes the person. That rank is just a sign of how that person's progress has gotten. It's you, it's being reliable and being there, whether it's a good day in your business or a bad day in your business or a good couple months or a hard couple months. It's just, do you believe that you will stay consistent? Do you believe that you will stay consistent to next month and then to the next month? Skills will come as you go. So, um, and everyone, like I said, everyone's is gonna be different what they need. So some people on here, Maybe you're struggling with attrition and there's a lot of attrition on your team. I actually, I was talking to Autumn about different things we could talk about. And I said, follow-up, recruiting, social media, attrition. And she was like, yeah, you know, talk about that. And I said, can I really talk about attrition? Am I really allowed to? <laughs> um, because I, I love talking about this because I see so many people get wrapped up in it. And attrition, if you don't know, is just when people pause their orders. That's it. When people just have paused their orders, that's what attrition is. And why do we see people get wrapped up in it? It's because they see that as success or failure on them. Remember what we said in the beginning, detaching ourselves from all of the processes. If I had somebody sign up today for me, I would feel great about that, right? But if I didn't have somebody sign up today with me, I'm still going to feel great about my business. It doesn't change. That person's action doesn't change whether I have belief and confidence in this business. Um, and that's what 
I want you to grab hold of. So if you are having attrition on your business, for example, people have paused their order. First, congratulations that you have attrition. If you have a large enough points to say, I have attrition, that means you have really progressed in your business. It's not just, I, I have five points lost. It's I have attrition. So congrats if you are having this situation because this is what business owners experience. I remember when my dad told me I was complaining about something and he said, Amber, that's not a plexus problem. That's just having your own business. And I, that, was, that was probably six years ago and I still remember that. So attrition or um, slow moments or whatever, it's not a problem with you or your business. It's just being a business owner. This is not as much as I it would be super cool as it was. It's not a straight up linear business, right? We have, we have um, seasons, just like every single industry on earth, just like us as humans in life, there are seasons. So congratulations if you are an attrition, you've earned it, good job. Also knowing that attrition is when you are needed most because what we see happen is if people drop off from your team, you might think, and I have definitely, like, remember when I quit, when I quit Plexus and I said I quit, it's because three people stopped ordering and I was gold. You, you feel shame. It's, it's guilt and shame. It's, I am not good enough. I didn't do something good enough. Maybe you start to doubt and any time fear and doubt, doubt is a, a stealer of all the good things in your future is doubt. Because anytime you start to question, it lets in more fears, it lets in more insecurities, it opens doors to that. So the faster you can squash doubt, the better you're going to have control over your mindset. The, the, the faster you're going to progress because you won't go through the slumps that doubt creates that you'll have to be talked out of later, right? So doubt's a killer. Um, but so we start to see doubt because we're looking at our points as a reflection of us and our level of, of um, whether we should be here or not. We're looking at it as a factor of, is this something I can do? First, I want to remind you guys, I told my team this year, we're not calling points points. We're calling them people. I want you to tell me how many people pause their order. I want you to tell me how many people you need to hit your next rank. You need to serve well to achieve the next rank. How many people does so-and-so need to tell, share her story with? to reach, right? Because when we talk about people instead of points, it becomes tangible. We know people. Points are kind of like a number on the scale, right? It doesn't mean anything about us. It's just currently how much we weigh. It doesn't mean anything about us. Same thing with our points. Um, and so I really want to encourage you guys to only call them people and make that part of, part of your talk because it's less about you and now it's more about them. So um, the other thing with attrition is it causes us to look for all the things that we might be doing wrong. And when we look for all the things we do wrong, a lot of times we stop doing everything at all and we throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? Because like I said, if you have attrition, that means you did something really, really good to get as many people as you have on the products. So you have to recognize your own success in that. And then knowing that, okay, so what have I done well? I have onboarded a lot of people. My team have gone so fast and onboarded so many people. We've shared well and authentically. We're going to keep doing that. We're not throwing out what we've done. We are not failures as a team. I'm not failure as a leader. We've done really well. Now, let me get curious. I tell my team all the time, get curious about your business whether it's in success mode or whether it's in the growth mode, get curious. What's causing this? What's causing that? This is where people will avoid their back office because they think it means something about them when instead their back office is something they should get super curious about and excited about because it's a measure for, for what's going on. And if you know what's going on, then you can influence that. You can take notes and make changes. So when you're looking at things like attrition, Know that it's a big deal that you got there in the first place. This is a phase in your business. Here's a new level of skill that you get to learn that really only leaders learn. If you're here with attrition, you are a leader. You've influenced a lot of people 
or you've influenced one person who has influenced a lot of people, right? So you've had an impact and it's a new skill area. That's your new skill area is how do I better serve? How do I teach my team to better serve those we are bringing on to retain them for longer periods of time? And when you're starting to ask questions and you're starting to get curious and you're looking for possibilities because you're not making it about you, you're like, it's almost becomes fun. I tell my team, like, what if it was easy? I love the, I love the phrase, what if it was easy? So when you're looking at growing your points, or you're looking at building a leader, or you're looking at um, having more retention on your team, I want you to ask yourself, what if this was easy? And really think with that for a second, because it opens up your brain scientifically to think, to get creative and think of possibilities right? Maybe you need to do a Zoom for onboarding new people. Maybe you have to have um, an email that goes out towards their second order. You know, all these different ideas that you can think of. But this is just your thing that you get to work in. Just like a new ambassador gets to work in, how do I share? Or how do I post? Uh, what videos do I send? That's a new ambassador's like question mark area of growth. Um, a Ruby, senior Ruby, you know, is how do I make new leaders? How do I build my people up to leadership? How do I raise my leader lid? That's a new area of growth. So maybe your area is how do I, re how do I retain, which is better serve the people? Um, so, so yes, this, this is my main thing through all of this. I know I'm talking a lot, but my main thing through all of this is detach yourself from whatever situation you are in your business. If you know that logically, and by logically, I mean proven on paper, proven on paper, this business works. Why? Because we've seen hundreds and thousands of people be successful. Proven on paper, these products work. Proven on paper, there's someone that had less skills than you and more things to overcome, right? And they still did it. So the only factor in the equation then is you. And I personally feel like that's terrifying and empowering. <laughs> it's terrifying because it takes, it puts a spotlight on us, right? We can't blame something else. Even if it's, I, I tell my team, even if you're in a season of your business where you don't have a lot of time, then just do what you can to continue to make progress. If that's just put one post or put a story of your breakfast and you taking supplements and that took you two seconds to do, then just do that and know that you are making progress forward. You do not have to have abundance of time, abundance of skills, a long uh, you know, period to make progress. It is in the tiny, because there's people that have all of that and still do nothing, right? So, but in the tiny micro moments, you can still move your business forward because your success measure is not, how many people did I sign? How many points do I have? That is, that's just a, that's just a progress point in your business because that's going to change in the future. It is not a sign of whether you, whether you are good, whether you are successful, whether you should be here. It's not, we look for our validation in our points and, and when what should be validation is, do I have a why? Do I want to progress? Am I here? If you are on the Zoom, you are out beating tens of thousands of ambassadors who have signed up with Flexus, hundreds of thousands, right? Because you are here. And that is our point measure. Um, whether you're silver, whether you're diamond like me, who's having to learn new skills now, new areas, um, it all comes down to that, so. Uh, Amber, do you have time for a couple questions? Yes, yes. Okay, um, such good stuff and you guys, Let's see, we got some things in the comments, but I love, love, love a couple things you said, put a yet on it. Love that. Um, points and people, love that. Of course, the whole attrition talk and then get curious about your business. Like such good stuff. Okay, who has questions for Amber? Um, let's just open it up and don't be bashful. And you can type in the chat box if you want to, but now is your time. Now is your time. 
What is the full name of the book again? Someone that is asking. It's Failing Forward by John Maxwell. And Patty and Bradley said, I love your focus on serving people. No, oh, thank you. I, I tell my team, like, um, we are in service. We're not, we're in the service industry. We're not in the sales industry mm -hmm. because one, one purchase of the triplex means nothing in residual income for you or for that person, really like one purchase um, one month is going to be okay, but you know, that's not what they're looking for. So it's service because continuing ordering of that one purchase is what builds residual income and builds results for themselves. And that only comes through, through that good service. Um, yes, I do events. So for our, for, so what we do is, um, every sing, every Thursday night, we have a stories of hope where we actually have it on a zoom setting and we have two different people tell their testimonies. And then we talk about products and just old school. We went back to old school, like what we did back in the day. Uh, so that's what we do every single Thursday at the same time. And then, uh, for prospects and then for wholesales to get on and build belief. And then every other Tuesday, we have something we call the business of gut health. And so we have two business stories on and we talk about um, why Plexus is a fabulous business to, to be in and share business stats. So those are the, those are the Zooms we do. Love it. How do you uh, is it okay if we ask a question out loud? Yep, go for it, Renee. Okay, I just, um, I can't, I'm on my iPad and it's weird to type. Um, so I, I'm, ended up going senior gold in three months, my first three months of Plexus. And then it was like, yeah, wow. But then it's like the brakes hit. And so it's just been desert for that. And I, I, I did have a lot of attrition, especially over Christmas, a lot of people turning things off. And I guess what I'm trying to focus on right now is how to not just find new people, but kind of, you know, I'm trying to play the long game and I don't want to get discouraged that, you know, 15 people turn off their subscription, but um, how do I schedule, work it where I either do events or reach out to people or help my people get people? Like, what is your strategy for moving over that hump? Like you said, senior gold was sort of that transition you, you were speaking to me. So do you have any advice for me? Yeah, yeah. So um, first, congratulations on senior gold in three months. I think it took me like one and a half years to do that. <laughs> So uh, I love how we all hit that period at different times. It took me a one and a half years to hit what you did in three months. But um, now you're hitting that period that I went through one and a half years of going through, right? So um, it's all different time periods. But so when you're looking, probably for you, what I would say is if you sign people so fast, and one of the things we do see, I've seen a pattern of when people sign a lot really fast, there usually is natural attrition because they brought on a ton and they're going to see some um, people pause their order from that. It's not that the products didn't work. It's not that they didn't get um, good experience. A lot of times it's because you have such a large group that you're pulling from and maybe you didn't have a system in place yet to help them continue on with the products or learn more about different products because you, your cup was so full, right? Where some of us complain about not enough, you had an overabundance. Um, so you can do a few different things. You could do a come back to Plexus type event where you share about uh, products and what they can do. You bring stories on. If they're your own individual people, I would reach out and I would just say, hey, um, I, I, I would usually when someone pauses, I'll ask them why they paused in a very, very kind way. I'll say, I, I hope you had a wonderful holiday. I know we have been through a crazy season and time, and that's caused a lot of us to not be able to stay steady in what we wanted or make progress towards what we wanted. Use this year if you need to use this year. You know, this year has been crazy. I don't know about you, but myself, it really threw me for a loop. Um, and you had said that your goals were, now, if you know their goals, that's where you can use this, X, Y, and Z. And I know that you paused your order. I'm sure it's because of the crazy time we're in. Is that goal something that you would still like to work towards? If so, I, could, I would be more than happy to make some recommendations and help you build a routine to stay consistent. So what you're looking for when you're messaging people is to give them an out so they don't feel bad about quitting or pausing. So you got to blame it on something else. I always say blame it on 
the world, the time we're in, blame it on yourself. If you need to, sometimes I've said, I'm so sorry. I went through such a busy period these last couple of months and I don't feel like I was there um, well enough to serve you and help you build that routine. I know your goal was weight loss and more energy. If that's something that you want this year still and are needing in your life, I would be so honored and thankful to be able to do that for you now, build that routine. If I do that, would you be open to starting again? Um, sending a message somewhat like that is what I personally would do. And then when you say looking for more people, I always tell my team, there's um, a belief and need tank. Everybody has a belief and need tank. If you can think of it as like little rectangular tank. And when their belief and their need is high and met, they will order Plexus. But you do not know how much belief needs to be built or how much need. So remember, they totally believe the products work but they don't personally feel like they have any need for them right now. So then they're not going to order or they have a need for them and you know it, but their belief hasn't been built yet. And the only way to fill up the belief and need tanks is through exposure and exposure is through consistently and repetitively putting before and after testimonies up going live. If you if go live and tell your story on Facebook, if most of your audience is on Facebook, bring somebody with you every single week, have someone on telling their story, do a live together. Um, and maybe, maybe you don't do lives and, and they're scary and uncomfortable. Then that's your new homework and growth area is that, you know, getting really creative. How do I build exposures and people, not just for new ones, but for the people who ordered paused because they will come back. If they see you right now, if you stopped and you were like, I don't really know, you know, I'm going to fade away because that didn't go the way I wanted. So I'm going to kind of work, kind of show up and fade away. They will watch that, see that, and they will never, you'll, you're not going to get their order again because you fade away. Right. Or maybe they'll order from somebody else who in a couple months or next year is on their feed with all that energy and they've had some experience. So they know they like the taste. So they'll go order from this person. But if you stay consistent, regardless of what they're currently choosing as their own human being individual, right, then you are going to be that person that's still with energy, that's still posting before and afters, that's still having transformation six months down the road. And I promise you to pieces that they will, the majority of them will start reordering or they'll message you and say like, can I try this product or can I do this? I just had someone order from me last month that it's been eight years, eight years almost in the spring. So almost eight years. And she was a bridesmaid in my wedding, best friends of mine to finally order the products. Um, so hopefully that gave you a couple ideas. Oh my gosh, that was so helpful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And congratulations. I'm so proud of you. That's so awesome. I'm Thank happy. you. <laughs> Amber, that's so true. Isn't it so fascinating? Like, I don't know of this to be true in any other company, but Plexus, we have such an amazing return rate. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, even yes. if people do like fall off, like mm -hmm. they end up, many of them end up coming back because they know what they had, or oftentimes they know they weren't totally committed. Like I had a really good friend come back and she admitted to me, so I really didn't give it my all the first time. And I know I wasn't consistent. I'm ready to do that. And that was like two years later that she came back, but she was ready. And she has been here now steady for like six months. I mean, she is good to go. So yeah. that's one of the beautiful things that if you all stay put and you keep doing your thing, like you will find that people will return and we coming out with new products every year. So, you know, we've always got something new. Yes. Yeah. Um, Amber, we had um, a couple questions here. Um, as far as sharing the vision of this business, like what are some of your tactics in doing that? Maybe with your own level ones, um, maybe with yes. your team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to answer that that one. And then how do you approach new ambassadors to work the business? Because they're, they're the same. Um, to having new ambassadors work is giving them vision to work, right? So one thing I always tell my team, is that it is a lot more beneficial to ask them if they're interested in earning income before they join. So if you are talking to them about products, if they came to you or you came to them, if like I messaged a girl tonight to ask her to offer Plexus to her, right? Um, and I just started changing my lingo on that too. We're not sending offers. We're asking if we can tell our story. 
So I messaged a girl tonight to ask if I could tell her my story. And in that, I also said, we talked about the products. And I also said the business has also been a blessing to my family as well. And I threw that line in there because I've seen over and over again, half the people are going to pick you up on the products. The other half are going to go straight to that business line that you offered them and say something about how they have been looking for a home business. So it's a lot less awkward and it's a lot more fitting to ask before they sign. Um, even right before they join or you're giving them options and you could say, and um, have you thought about, I'm sure you've seen me share the income options with Plexus. Is that something that you would be open to, not interested in, open to is a lot better of a word, in, in the future? And I always say in the future to really take the pressure off. And so I ask in the beginning um, because they're going to give me a lot of yeses before then they wouldn't give me after because then they're like, oh, I got to do something if I say yes. Right. So um, after they join. So if they've already joined, though, it's really just asking them and asking them from a point of, of service, knowing that this could be an amazing opportunity, knowing that they have a referral. I'll call it a referral link. A lot of times you, I don't I don't know. You know, I wanted to bring this up because I'm not sure if I talked to you about this when you first got started or you could say I didn't bring this up when you first joined because I knew that you were um, really looking at the products first, but I wanted to share with you about the referral link that you have. Do you know that you have that? It's just like a Stitch Fix box or a Thrive Market box. And if someone orders off of that, you're going to get 25, anywhere from X amount to X amount from their orders. Is that something that you would want to know more about? You could, that could, that's a more subtle offer. Um, a more direct offer would just tell them, I think I am loving this income opportunity. I'm loving this business. Our team is amazing. It's all about service. It's something I never thought I'd find before, but I wanted to, but I wanted to ask if you are open to earning income through sharing Plexus as well, uh, through sharing your story with Plexus as well. Right. And just ask because I see you on social media or because I know that you're a stay at home mom, too, or because I know that you're so busy at your corporate job. And and I don't know about you, but this is my goals for my life. If you share your goals and desires, it usually opens them up to be OK sharing those theirs. So you have to ask. And then the other the third thing I would say is exposure. So I know now that everything I post on my Instagram story, sometimes I just post for my ambassadors and customers to see. It's not something I'm posting because I think it's going to draw in new people. It's because I know it's going to be build belief in the people who are already my ambassadors and customers. And I want them to see that stuff. And I've seen it over and over again. Like today I posted a uh, joy on before and after. And one of my current triplex ambassadors messaged me and said, Hey, um, I was thinking about adding the joy on onto my order. How much is that? And it's because I shared that in my story. So it's exposure, exposure. And I've seen that work the same with the business. Um, and then, we do do business events, business of gut health events um, to share more about it. And I would encourage you to do that with your team, even if it's you and four other sidelines and you get on a Zoom and you give it all your energy and all your excitement about this incredible business opportunity. And you just ask your ambassador to be on just to hear their options and their potential they have with Plexus. And that's how I would do that. Um, and what do you do to pour into your runners, business builders? Do you have weekly Zooms? Everything has changed since COVID. Yes. So one of the best amazing things that we've had is every single week, every Monday morning, we have a Monday meetup and it is a team Q&A and chat. And I always come with about 10 minutes of training and then it's open forum. Anyone have questions? Who has a success? Tell me something you're super proud of this week. Um, do, and we just have an open forum time. And it's been so fun. It's been awesome. They will start small, but if you stay consistent, they will grow and have people on with you. So that's the main thing that we do. Um, and we do those. We actually do them twice a week, um, Mondays, Monday morning, and then we have a Wednesday afternoon to hit different time periods. And it's so fun. We've gotten to be great friends. And that. we're going to wrap this up, but I do have a question I want to take you back to. You said, and I had never heard of anyone say that they've actually offered the business right before they're signing someone up. So mm -hmm. you're talking products, you're getting ready to sign up, and then you're basically saying, oh, and hey, are you going to be looking and wanting to know more about the business side of things? Is that kind yeah, of I'll take it well, if I offer Plexus to them, I put the business in that offer. I say products, 
Um, they've really blessed me. I've seen this and this. Is that something that maybe you would open to? I never know unless I ask. And I love sharing with other moms. Also, this home business has been such a blessing to our family and allowed us so many things. Uh, and then I, I end it with, um, I'll say, and if, and if there's no interest on your side, I, I totally respect that. Um, thank you so much for being friends with me here on IG, like something like that to my Instagram people. So that is my preferred method. If they come to me and we're talking about options and I'll say, well, here's the wholesale route. You get this and this and this, and also a referral link is the, I, I'm not sure if you've seen me share about the income opportunity and what I do from home. It's really blessed our family. I've been able to make thousands of dollars from home, you know, whatever, or hundreds of dollars, whatever you're going to say. Um, and uh, is that something that you would be open to in the future? Just so I know how to best serve you or best help you. Because if they say yes, then when they join, I say, okay, because you told me in the future that you would like to um, earn income as if you love these products during this month and you would like to share your story, I want you to put a post up now. Just put a post up saying you just got started. You're so excited. You'll see how this goes. That's it. Just so that if you want to earn income and you, or you want to share your link or whatever, you'll have already started your story then. Um, so I'll go, I've gotten that option as well. And that's a soft, that's a soft kind of subtle intro. Absolutely love that. All right. So the last thing I'm going to ask you just to kind of um, give these people perspective for a new year, and then we're going to conclude discipline. Yes. Discipline in the work that we're doing, mm -hmm. intentional work daily. Mm -hmm. How do you think that can implement our businesses, like these people's businesses that they get on Facebook and they mean to do things, but they're 30 minutes okay. in on scrolling. Yeah. I am so glad you asked me this because I just started something a couple of weeks ago with my girls and it has been just fire and amazing for me and them because discipline is very hard for me too. I live a incredibly busy life, incredibly busy life. Um, so every single morning, and we do this one-on-one. -on -one. So I do this with a few girls individually like this. I don't have a group chat for it because I actually feel, and if you have runners and business builders or just a sideline, one other person, I feel like a group chat, people can feel like they can get away without posting something or out, out putting something in the chat. Nobody's going to notice, right? So I've decided to keep it one-on-one -on -one and we use text messages and just our messenger. Um, so every single morning we send an intentional list. This is my intentional list. And it's what we have thought about that we're going to do that day to move our business forward. And it always starts with talking to people. So like my intentional list today, guys, was I'm going to message this new prospect that I have gotten into my warm market. And I think she'd be interested. I'm going to follow up with three new. And I have them like I know the names of the people. I have it in my thing, the names written down. I've looked over my names. So this is super, super intentional. I'm going to follow up with these three potentials that I had shared with last week and see what they think. I'm going to check in on my two new ambassadors because their products are going to ship next week and see what they're thinking. I put on here at the end, I'm going to get on a Zoom tonight at eight o'clock. You know, I, I'll have it. And so it starts with that. And then it goes down into like, I have a graphic I have to make. I have a this. So it's crazy intentional. And then at the end of the day, we write each other back what we did. Um, and I'll say, and so yesterday, because my intentional list for today was actually yesterday's. Yesterday, I got distracted. I work from 7 to 10.30 in the morning on Monday mornings with two Zooms in there. But from my work, what I did was graphics. I did teamwork. I did ambassador chats. I did not do my in talking to new people thing because that takes more emotional energy, right? And it's easier just to do all this busy work. So I had to message them last night and I said, I put it off and all through the day, I kept thinking, I'll do it after lunch. I'll do it after this. I'll do it, but I put it off, put it off. And I was like, I didn't do it. So I'm having to move it all to tomorrow. And I'm owning up to that. I, that I caused this, but tomorrow morning, it's the first thing I did. And so tomorrow, this morning, it was the first thing I did was did my intentional list. Um, so that is actually how we've been doing a couple of weeks. And it has been so amazing because it makes me think every day. What is an action that will actually move my business forward and is not just busy work? And then I really want to tell my girls that I did it that night. I really don't want to say that I didn't do it. So <laughs> that's what we've been doing. 
Oh, sorry. I was muted. Oh my gosh. Thank you so, so much for being here. This, you just continue to be one of the most wise leaders in this company. I love you so much. Thank you so much for taking your time um, this evening, everyone. Um, thanks for being here. We have this recorded, so we will share it. God bless you, my friend, and um, happy new year. And uh, we'll see you again uh, sometime in the future. Take yes. Care. Thank you so much, guys.